Hey y'all, and welcome to the Feasting on Truth podcast. I'm Erin Warren, and I am so glad that you are here. This is our final episode that is a companion to the Restructuring Faith series over on the Million Praying Moms podcast. So over there, you can hear um, Million Praying Moms founder Brooke McLaughlin and I having conversations around building faith and what it looks like. Um, as we wrestle faith. And one of the aspects that we were talking about in this fi- in this fourth episode and final episode was around community. And I teased over there um, some deeper um, kind of teaching and understanding around the role that the community, um, the body of Christ, the big C church plays, um, and also your local church plays in your faith. Um, and so I, this is something that I feel like is so important. And I think it's something that we often overlook. We talk a lot about the importance of quiet time. We talk a lot about the importance of time with God spent in his word and how that has an effect on our faith. And then On the side, we have this second conversation about, oh, you should be involved in a local church. You should be, and it often and very quickly turns toward a conversation around serving. And yes, we are called to serve within our local bodies and to serve one another in the church. But I think sometimes we miss the importance of community. Um, And this is um, in studying God's word in in community. Um, This is something I'm extremely passionate about. In fact, it is at the core of my Feasting on Truth ministry, that we are women in community around the word of God, because it is only there that we can wrestle hard questions when we have the word of truth between us. Um, Pastor Miles Fidel, I was listening to him a couple years ago, and he was talking about Um, this idea of personal time with the Lord. And he said this, um, our our time with God should always be personal, but never private. Um, We are not called to study in isolation. We're called to study personally, but also in community. And the reason for that is because Satan loves (laughs) for us to be in isolation. Um, He knows that when we are in isolation and we are separated, then we are in a space where we are more easily taken by his lies. Um, We are more susceptible to partial truths or misunderstanding. And so it's always important for our faith and building our faith that we are coming together in community around the word of God. And this is something that I'm super passionate about. And I very often argue is actually one of the most important things. So as women, particularly, this is something that we're really good at, but it's also something that we constantly are putting on the back burner. Oh, I'm too busy in this season of life. Oh, I'm running around doing all these other things. I've got to get kids here, there, and there. Work is so busy. I'm traveling so much. Um, And we make this excuse. Now, please hear me. There are ebbs and flows within a calendar year where maybe we will be in deep community for fall Bible study, spring Bible study, and maybe in summer, we're not actively meeting together. So what I'm talking about is this in general, if you are never in a space where you are studying scripture and then meeting with other women in some sort of regular rhythm to discuss it, then, um, We've got some ground to make up. Um, And I I just think it's so important because we are called to community. This idea, this fellowship that we get to experience within um, the body of believers is the Greek word koinonia. And I love this word. And it's a word that I've kind of been studying around a little bit over the last year. Um, It is a repeated word in the book of Philemon. So we see a lot about community within that book. Um, It's throughout the New Testament, this idea of fellowship. And the original 
koinonia that we get to experience is with God. But then because we have this koinonia with God, we now have this koinonia with each other. And this word is more than just fellowship. This is not a, hey, we get together and um, have a potluck once a month. This is not, hey, we get together and we go out to dinner with people, or we all like to do crafting. So we're all going to craft together. Koinonia is deeper than that. Um, it comes, it literally means a sharer. And it comes from a root word that means a participant who mutually belongs or shares fellowship. It's a joint participant. And that is what we get to experience with each other because we first have koinonia with God. Um, I love, and I still, I don't think that our English can really grasp the depth and the beauty of koinonia. Christianity Today um, released an article recently, and I will link to it in the show notes for you. But it um, describes koinonia this way. It says koinonia suggests a bond distinct from bio from the biological one that was so important in the Old Testament, where family and lineage were paramount. In other words, few relationships or arrangements were so strong as to draw someone away voluntarily from their biological family into a new kind of community. I think what's so powerful and beautiful about Koinonia is that it's a family bond. It's a family relationship. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And, um, and for them, the family relationship was paramount. It was everything. And so what Jesus does through um, his, his body and his blood spill and his sacrifice on the cross and raising from the dead is that he opens this new family with a bond that is even deeper than the one of blood, of flesh and blood. Um, and so I love Koinonia. Um, uh, we see a few spaces, um, Acts 2, 42 through 47. Um, we see this picture from the early church of what it, Koinonia looked like. This, um, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and um, in the fellowship. That's the Koinonia word. So again, community around the word. Um, breaking of bread and prayers, um, awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done um, through the apostles and all who believed were together and had everything in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need and day by day attending temple together and breaking bread in their homes. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. Um, we see that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching together. Um, the Greek word literally means steadfastly continue in. It's this idea that they clung to what the apostles taught them, that they continued with intense effort, that they remained fixed in one direction um, together. Um, they prayed together. They um, broke bread, which was not just about having these community um, meals together, but also um, many scholars believe it is also a reference to the Lord's Supper or communion with the breaking of bread and um, the taking of, of wine or juice as the symbol and remembrance um, of what Jesus did with his disciples the night before his arrest. Um, they had everything in common. Y'all, this doesn't mean that they were all the same, but it meant that what mattered most Jesus is what they had in common and nothing else mattered. And we see that throughout the whole New Testament um, as Paul in many of his letters and some of the other um, writers are trying to bring unity between clashing ethnic groups. Um, that's the whole background of the book of Romans. And so um, it's they, they knew that what mattered most was that they had God in common and their faith in common. And so because of that, um, they, they were generous with one another. They prayed together. They had community together. That is this picture of Koinonia. Um, and I think one of my favorite places where I see how we live this out is found in Hebrews in 10, Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the confession of hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. That's been a common verse that I have quoted over and over and over 
throughout um, these podcasts, through our Instagram live interviews, in the book, um, Everyday Prayers for Faith, finding confidence in God no matter what. He who promised is faithful. And so because of that, we can hold fast to faith. But here are the next two verses. And I think it is not by accident that the author of Hebrews put hold fast to your faith right next to a call to community. He said, let us consider how to stir one another up toward love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day, capital D, approaching, drawing near. Y'all, we hold fast and we help each other hold fast to faith. We stir one another up. That Greek word has this intonation of like an irritant, like rubbing one to action. We help each other to hold to faith, to love one another, to toward good works, which is a way of saying following in Jesus's way, like obey obedience to his word. Um, we don't neglect to meet together. Y'all, it's so important that the author of Hebrews puts meeting together with um, holding fast to our faith um, and encouraging one another. The, that word encourage is the same Greek word that's um, also sometimes translated comfort. Um, it means um, up close and alongside. It's not something that you do from afar. And I don't necessarily even mean distance, but um, the way we emotionally and spiritually uh, um, open ourselves up to um, that community, that we are allowing one another to meet um, needs in each other's lives. Um, I have a... Um, Part of Feasting on Truth is that we have uh, a Zoom Bible study that meets on Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. You are welcome to join at any time. Um, we are um, getting ready to start back with the book of Mark. We're halfway through, but, um, you know, we are women who are in different states and different stages of life, but we have this one thing in common, and um, we find this time that works does it work for everybody? No, but it work. But um, for those who are in that space where, you know, maybe they're a single mom and they can't get to church on a Wednesday night, um, maybe they work and they travel. We have women who join us on the road when they're traveling. We have um, just for whatever variety of reason, um, it has been so neat to see how God has met a need and how we can lift one another up in prayer. Um, we can walk alongside as best we can um, as our as our as our community hurts. Um, when um, we've had multiple who have lost loved ones, um, we've lost um, some very dear women to us that have been part of our study um, to various illnesses. Um, we've had um, you know just that ability to have somebody to to talk to and to pray through with um but i also have an in person group that i um do with some moms from my kids school and it's beautiful too to sit around a living room um it it i think a lot of times we put these like constraints on what it should look like um but our god is a really big god <laughs> and i think that when sisters come together um, willing to lay aside pride, to open themselves with authenticity toward one another, um, and put the word of God, the truth of him in between them, then I know that he is going to build community. Some of my most, I'm going to go with all my, my closest relationships are ones that started with us, with the Bible between us. And, um, it, it takes time. And sometimes I think we're not patient. It changes with seasons of life. But I think that if we um, take that step, um, part of my heart is to help women um, have what they need to make that happen. And so if Tuesday night Bible study doesn't work for you, or you have a group at your church, um, all of the teachings for all of the Bible studies that I have are all available on YouTube and podcasts for free. Um, on, at feastingontruth.com, you can find um, 
all of the Bible studies that we have thus far. Um, and you're well, you can buy the book and you can do them on your own with a group of friends from work or um, a group from your church or a neighborhood group or, um, you know, whatever. And I'm here if there's anything I can do to help you um, pick one. Um, you can always email me, um, Aaron at Aaron H Um, so, um, but here it's just so important. That's what I want y'all to know. And I want to close because this is what I teased. <laughs> All of that was on my background. I told y'all I was really passionate about this. Um, here's what, here's what I think is one of the most powerful pictures of why we need to be in the community and what effect it has on our faith. Um, because sometimes uh, we're going to find ourselves going through sp spaces of hardship, trial, crises. Um, our faith is going to be rocked. Um, we are not going to be in a space maybe where we are able to um, have faith for ourselves. And there's this beautiful picture of how the community of faith can help come and literally shield you um, in in those times. And it's found in Ephesians six. It's hidden. If you had, if you don't take the time to kind of really dig deep and study the context, um, you may just breeze right over it and be like, yep, shield of faith. Got it. Um, but there's this incredible picture. So Ephesians six, 16, in all circumstances, all circumstances, we take up the shield of faith, all circumstances, we can hold the shield of faith, no matter what you are going through, you can hold your shield of faith, um, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. So here's the background that you need to understand with this. So as Paul is writing this, he's in prison and it's very likely that he is looking at a Roman soldier. And so he is, um, there's actually um, scripture in the Old Testament that relates some of these characteristics of um, of the armor of God in the Old Testament. So the head of um, the helmet of salvation. Um, so I think he's probably thinking. This is speculation. Um, I think he's probably thinking of those and looking at this these soldiers that are in his life while he is in prison, and remembering um, how how we, God has this armor that we can put on. It's his armor. It's not our own. And so here's the thing about the shield of faith. So the, sh the shields that Roman soldiers carried were like a door. They were huge. Um, and they were heavy. They were wooden. They were probably about four feet tall, if I remember correctly. Um, and they would cover the front with leather. And when they were in battle or they were, um, marching toward an enemy, um, they would often wet the leather. And the reason why is because from afar, uh, the enemy would be firing arrows with fire on them. You know, you've probably seen them in movies and things like that. So there was this, um, you know, they would shoot literally arrows on fire at them. And so when the arrows, the fire hit the wet leather, they would extinguish and they would be able to continue advancing. But here's what's even more incredible is that Roman soldiers, when they were advancing, would take what was called the testudo formation. Um, it's also, it's the, uh, I think the Greek word is tortoise shell. So it's like a tortoise formation. So think like a turtle shell where they would take their shields and they would, uh, they would kind of line them around and then they would rest them and overlap them over their heads these big, heavy shields. And the reason they were able to do that was because the way that they would overlap them would help shift the weight so that they were all bearing the weight of the shields of faith. Okay. Now what's okay. So they have this whole covering of faith over them as a community together made them stronger so they could advance against the enemy. Do you see where I'm going here? Okay. But here's what's even more incredible is that when they were taking this formation, they would often take the weaker soldiers or um, certain, like if they had animals with them or whatever, and they would put them in the center. So the ones who could not hold the shields over them would be at the center under the shields of faith of the others. And y'all, that 
is what community is. Um, Y'all, I just think it's the most beautiful picture. And it's right there waiting for us. And I know, y'all, I know there is church hurt out there. I know that some of you have tried to put yourself out there and you have been burned. Y'all, I have been burned. I have been uninvited. I have been in situations where I trusted someone and I shouldn't have. I get it. But you cannot let the sins of those who um who who hurt you keep you from the goodness and the glory and the beauty of healthy relationship with each other within church. I know that it is out there because I have found it and I have persevered. Um, some of it starts with us not being afraid. Um, some of it starts with being faithful to keep showing up even when you're not seeing the fruit. I will tell y'all my online group, it took us a couple years to really get it, but we kept showing up every Tuesday night and being vulnerable with one another and 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 being authentic and and um and honest with each other. And the Lord is building beautiful community. Um I was debating whether or not I was going to share this cuz um but I can remember about 5 years ago one of my dearest friends um husband was in the ICU. And I don't I just um, I had just kind of learned this in the probably year or two before um, Priscilla Shire teaches about it um, a little bit in her um, Armor of God Bible study, which is one of my favorite fill in the blank Bible studies, by the way, y'all. Um, so I, I had this image in my head, in my head of my friend next to her husband's hospital bed with just this little light shining down on them and a covering over them of all the shields of faith of their friends who were praying for them, who were um, going before the throne, who were literally holding their life together for them. Because in that moment, all she could do was be at her husband's bedside. And I think that is what we get with koinonia. That is what we get with fellowship. And y'all, it's too important. Satan wants us to be isolated because he knows. He knows the power that exists when we show up. He missed the power. He knows the power that happens between us when we put the word of truth and, um, and we, we are learning and studying who God is in his word together. Y'all, I think we've put a lot of rules. I think we've added a lot of rules of what community should look like that I don't know that I necessarily see in scripture. And so I want to encourage you, find a way and do it. You're welcome to try some of mine. You can find, you know, I encourage you to do it within, within your local church, but community is too important. Um, I am going to do one little bonus episode next week. Um, so be sure you come back um, where I'm going to read a little bit of the um, my new book, Everyday Prayers for Faith, Finding Confidence in God, No Matter What. Um, because I want you to know that my heart is that that will be true for you. Um, my heart is that you would know the God who is faithful, faithful, faithful to do all he says he is. I want you to know his promises forward and backward. I want you to know his character so deeply that when Satan comes, you have a shield of faith to hold up. When he comes for your kids or he comes for your friend or he comes for a family member, you can hold your shield of faith and say, mm -mm, not today, Satan, not today. I know the truth. And here's the truth. My God is who he says he is, and he will do what he says he will. He is faithful. And so because of that, we can hold fast to faith. Let me pray for us. Oh, God, I just, I love, Lord, that you didn't just come and save us. And that was that. 
but Lord, that you gave us everything we needed for life and godliness. And so much of that is found in each other and in community, Lord. And as loneliness and, and anxiety run rampant through our society, where we have bought the lie that we are more connected than ever, Lord, um, but yet still face this insane loneliness. God, I just pray that you would just reach into the hearts of these women. Lord, I just pray that they would be strong enough and brave enough to step out, to find the community around your word that will help them, that will hold this shield of faith, Lord, that will um, lead them to you. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to grow them in their faith, that they would build faith and that they would be firmly rooted so strong in you, Lord, that they would have confidence in you no matter what. Lord, I just thank you for everyone that is listening. I thank you for their heart of curiosity, Lord, to listen this far. And I just pray that you would show yourself to them and that they would see that nothing this world has to offer, Lord, could do for them what you can, that you are jealous for them and that their very best life lies in full surrender to them. May they have the strength to say yes to you and to follow you in obedience and to walk in your ways. Lord, it's in your holy, precious, good, excellent name that I pray. Amen. Amen.